welcome to this new tutorial where we'll be generating 3D pillows, cushions or similar objects. Okay? So, first of all, open up Cinema 4D and click on Primitives to add a cube object. Okay? Great. Then, go to the top menu and select Display to see the lines. And once there, click on Gorat Shading. That's it, great. I'm going to create two pillows so that you can see the difference between a low poly object and a high one. So, select the cube and move it to the side. But before moving on, click on the point at the top and scale it down to make it smaller. But if you want to be more precise, Another option is setting the size of the y-axis to 90. Then, while holding Ctrl, click on the x-axis arrow to duplicate the cube. Perfect. OK. We have two exact copies. Well, select the first copy and name it as low, as it will be the low poly version. Then go again to the Object Properties panel and set segments X and Z to 20. See? Regarding the high poly object, we'll set both X and Z axis to 80 segments. In this case, the definition is higher. There are many more polygons. I'm doing this so that you can appreciate the difference between a low and a high poly object. I'm going to name it high. Oops, sorry, left the edge. Well, next, make a editable these two objects by pressing C or by clicking on the button in the left menu. Click and make them editable. Great. Now we're ready to start adding cloth tags. To do so, just select one of one object from the menu Right click and go to simulation tags and clothes. Do the same for the two of them, okay? Guys, if you go to the low poly object and click on the clothes tag, a menu will open up at the bottom with different ta tabs. So play around with them. In this case, we'll be only working with the dresser tab, which is this one and we'll be modifying all these parameters. So first of all, we need to insert a seam in the middle of the polygons. Mm, right there, okay, in the middle. So, uh, go to the polygon mode and press V. Different options appear immediately. Click on the select one and pick lip selection in order to select the side polygons of, of the object. Select the polygons and go to the dresser menu. Once there, in Sim Polys, choose Set. By selecting this option, the software understands we want it to be created in the middle of the polygons. Then, in the Dressomatic command, we find steps and width. The width option determines the seam's width, and the steps determine the number of, of times that the clothing gene will sample. But we'll see it in a moment, okay? So, set width to 5, for example, in the steps to 50. It's just an example. Press Dressomatic to string the seam to that width, generating this sort of cushion. All points drape with the seam. See? But let's go back for, for a moment. If I change width to 0 0.5, this time the seam's width will be smaller. Can you see the difference? Obviously, the narrower the seam is, the better. So let's set it to 0 0.2. Also, the more steps and more samples will be generated. 
obviously depending on the number of polygons we established before. Okay, and it automatically shrinks and creates the seam. Okay, so let's move on now to the other object to see what happens when working with a higher number of polygons. You'll see that the difference is huge. Press V to select the polygons, then select a loop selection, and then select the sides. Open the cloth tag panel and choose set in C poly in C polys to create the same. Great. After that, set the steps to 200 and width to 0 0.2. It was will slow down the software, but the definition will be higher. Now click on Dress Automatic and the software automatically turns the object into a cushion. See, can you spot the difference between them? The low poly object doesn't look like a cushion at all, right? So, the difference between them is considerable. Well, now we can delete the tags to easily move the object. There we go. It's also possible to insert the low poly model into a subdivision surface. However, its definition is by no means lower. So it's better to generate a high poly pillow. In case we need to make it for video games, for example, then we'd use different techniques to get an optimal mesh. But that's a different mat matter, okay? Well, I'll remove the subdivision surface and the low poly cushion as well. We don't need them anymore. And keep only the high poly version. We can also add a subdivision surface modifier to the high poly object, although it's unnecessary since the number of polys is already quite high and it won't increase the definition. See? Now the number of polygons is quite high, so let's disable it. Cool, now we can add a material of a specific color to the cushion. Great. So our cushion is colored, but obviously this texture can be improved. And this is what, what we are going to do now. Before adding colors, let me tell you something. In case you want to modify the cushion and make it softer or fluffier, you can use a brush. But let me remove this first. Okay, so select the cushion and go to the point mode. Then go to the top menu and select a mesh, transform tools and brush. A panel will open on the right where we can tweak parameters such as the strength, radius or width. Set radius at 65, and as you can see, we can modify the cushion's geometry. Modifying the cushion's shape is quite easy with the, this brush. There are millions of different options. We can even create another set of cushion. This tool is great for modifying and is in the process, okay? So, let's use it, okay? I recommend you to use it. In the next step, we'll be generating UVs. Why is it that important? Well, because if we, if we add a pattern to the object without UVs, the pattern won't be clearly appreciated, see? So, Let's go to layout at the right top. And once the select BP UV edit. Then some panels will appear where we can set the UVs. 
Now click on projection tab and you'll see different options. What we are going to do now is to determine how UVs will be projected. I think this is the best option because it's a quite optimal projection, but it's not perfect though. Thus, click on Leaf Selection and select the polygons in the middle, which go around all over, all over the cushion. Then select loop, loop Selection and select all of them, OK? Now activate the Edge Mode and select the uh, edges of the selection. OK. Let's go now to projection and select frontal projection. Then click on the relax UV and make sure the option cut selected edges is checked. Then click on apply. After that, we got a much more precise cut. Don't worry about it, this is strange shape. Next, press E and put it aside for the moment. Click now on the rectangle selection and select all these elements. Again, projection tab, frontal, then relax UV and apply to generate the two sides of the cushion. If you want, work with a top perspective to apply it easily. OK. Now select again this weird shape and move it here. Press T to scale it down and adjust it to the textures frame. Great, so our UV mesh is ready. Now we can add the material to the object. See? The pattern is clearly projected. However, if you look close closely, the seam is different from the rest, but it's the case since it won't be appreciated. Guys, if you want, you can improve and work on the seam. It's not necessary in this case, though, since it won't be visible. But how can we improve the seam? Well, let me remove the texture I just created first. Great, now select the polygon mode and select the polygons dividing the cushion, those in the middle. Then Great. Then, in each corner, use the edge mode to select the edges. Make sure to select an edge in each corner. Use Shift to keep the selection. Again, activate the polygon mode to check where the edge should be included. Don't forget to press Shift at the same time. Insert an edge in each corner. Once you finish selecting the edges, go to the Relax UV tab and click on Apply. This way the projection can be improved. Oh, this, it is still remains to improve this area over here, OK? Remember that by pressing Alt and double-clicking, we can select each polygon island. By pressing E, we can move them with the R, rotate them, and with the T key, scale the selection. OK? The shortcuts are on the screen.
Well, so now that the projection is significantly improved, apply again the texture to see the result. Great. Uh, let's go now to look for some patterns. Go to Freepik and there you'll find thousands of different options. You can download them as vectorial files. In my case, I've selected this simple pattern, which I'm going to open up in Photoshop. It has 1,500 by 1,500 pixels and 72 dpi. Save this image as PNG, JPG or GIF, or the format you prefer. Then go back to Cinema 4D and upload the image from the material editor window. Upload the image to the texture field. Perfect. As you can see, the pattern is nicely preacted in the cushion and there's no unwanted issues, right? The seam is almost invisible. We could even make it more attractive by choosing a silver tone. So click on the render pop-up menu and select interactive render region. This tool can be scaled and we could use it to increase the render's definition. We use it to effectively work with the material. So go here and select Sky. Open again the Material Editor and check Reflectance. Click on Remove to delete all the default settings and add GGX. Use the slider to increase the roughness parameter. Then, in layer color, we can also increase or reduce the material's brightness. As you know, the, white, the whiter, the more metallic the, mater the material will be. Okay, I'm gonna use another sky so that you can easily appreciate the effect I want to get. Much better now. Okay, the material is slightly metallic. The texture can be entirely metallic if we move the slider to the white or without brightness if it's closer to black. We can modify the roughness with the slider to determine the light reflection as well. Okay. Great, I'm going to leave it here and explain to you another method to do this. So another way to generate textures is by working with the splines. So let's create a new file and generate a text spline. On the right, you'll see a text object panel where we can modify the text properties. Type toothpad here, for instance, and select a font. Make sure to choose a white font. Play around with different options. In my case, I'm going to use Ubuntu. Well, let's see how it looks. Select the text object and go to Add Subdivision Surface. There, click on Extrude while holding Alt. If we click on Extrude, some parameters appear in the bottom panel where we can modify the extrusion movement or the number of sub subdivisions.
I will modify anything for the moment. Go back again to the text properties panel and modify some features. Select the uniform option from the intermediate points pop-up men menu, okay? Select Extrude again and click on Caps tab. Once there, check the Create Single Object box and in Type, select Quadrangles. Check the regu regular grid box as well to generate polygons. See? Then set width to 2. As the lower it is, the better. Go back to the text panel and increase the number of parameters to 30. This time, the higher the number is, the better. Let's try with 30. Click on Extrude and make the word editable. Disable the polygon selection since we don't need it anymore. Right click on Extrude, Simulation Tags, and Clothe. Okay, and now what? Okay, again, to dr Dresser. Go to Select, Loop Selection, to choose the side polygons of each letter. Hold Shift to select the polygons of each letter. Once you finish, go to the Dresser tab and choose Set in Seam Palace to create the seam. And after that, we'll create the Dressomatic. Remember that the higher number of steps, the better. In this case, I'll set it to 50. Okay, so after that, well, I set width to 0 0.2. Okay, now click on Dressomatic and wait. See? The result is really cool. It looks like a sort of balloon or fabric. And what about using a higher value? So go back and set the steps to 150. The surface is now more irregular and fluffier. This also means that the device will be slowed down. Delete the cloth tag. We could even add a subdivision surface to increase its definition. Okay, let's check out the final results. Okay. Cool. In this case, it's more like a balloon and the texture is also metallic. However, it can be combined with different fonts and shapes. It's entirely up to you. For example, we could use a, we could use triangular splines, for instance. Okay, and here we have our cushions. I've generated the image so that you can see the results. Cool. So guys, I really hope that you liked the tutorial and see you in the next one. Bye.